Okay, loved ones, I think we got this under control. So <clears throat> here's my current situation. I spent the last day and a half looking for my deeds. I had three variations of this thing on the go, one starting from seven years ago uh, that Dean and I sent to the Governor General. It was a pretty meaty one. This one was based entirely out of the Settled Lands Act 1925 out of England. Um, that was a pretty beefy one. I'm still trying to get my hands on that. Something's telling me, though, it was in my old computer, which I just threw in the garbage not long ago because I've tried to find it in this computer I got now, and it's like, give me some grief. So <laughs> then I was working on another one from about a month and a half ago, and for some reason, I can't find this one either. So I'm thinking, well, what am I going to talk about this morning then? Well, all right, we got some good ideas. We're going to talk more about trusts generally because, again, we're talking about a deed of trust. This is just a piece of paper that's evidencing a trust exists. So I want to back this up a little bit and refer to Gibson's book again here and just illustrate some of these positions that we keep talking about this, you know, the, the, the settlor, the grantor, the beneficiary, the trustees, and how all this kind of dials itself in and what a resulting trust is, what a constructive trust is, these things. So without further ado, I wanted to talk about one more quick thing here. Um, there was a little bit of chatter there recently on one of the chats respecting leadership, future leadership. Uh, you know, there's the here's basically three consensus is here going. We we don't need any leadership moving forward. We're all going to be the same and go get her done. Uh, we need select new leadership. And let's definitely not bring in any of that old stuff. And I am basically going to be somewhat in agreement with all of these positions. But we need to kind of develop a, a, a tactical way of approaching this with, you know, a, a scope of reality and, and a scope of... You know, certain individuals need to be in certain positions to get us into a place where we need to all be going. What do I mean by that? So let's pretend for a moment that we had terrible leadership for the last, I don't know, couple of generations anyway. So how do you go from terrible leadership to no leadership at all? And we all just fend for ourselves. This is not going to be the way that this really needs to be going. This is going to create a more problems than probably we're already dealing with. Because that's, that's going to be like an authority type structure starts to break down. And we do want to maintain, you know, some semblance of order and control where everyone now thinks, oh, I'm a sovereign. I can just run through this stop sign and, and you know, I can hit a family. I can go to the grocery store and grab that block of cheese and walk out if I want to. And again, this is where some of this bad press really started. And again, how long ago was this? This was probably four or five years ago where there was some alleged free man, sovereign citizen dude in either British Columbia or Alberta here in Canada. So this guy's on the news for some reason. I don't even know how, how really this how, how this happened. This guy's renting a suite off of some woman in her house or something to this effect. And then he rolls in and tries to dispose her of her home and claims that he has all these sovereign rights and he's got all this shit, that and the other. And he somehow is making this big kerfuffle in the news. So what does the media do with that? Of course. Uh -huh. See, look at all these free man sovereign types. They're all criminals is essentially what is where this thing was heading. So what I'm suggesting is, no, okay, individuals like that, no, you have no business in any type of authoritative or leadership type, type role or position. Get out of my way. And I got no problem saying that to anybody, really, at the end of the day. And because, and here's why. When your heart is in the right place and your mind has spent a lot of time <laughs> reflecting on life itself, figuring out ways that we can do things better, helping each other, putting your, essentially sacrificing anything it takes to get this done. And that's why anybody that was kind of intrigued by this sovereign free man movement from back in the day, what that was really doing or what that was really bolstering or empowering in each and every one of us, it was A, we've all been tricked. B, we should get our stuff back, and C, we should make this world a better place. So Dean's message here was very empowering. I mean, look what happened. There was, there was all kinds of spirit raised based on what we were doing. Now, the problem is that we weren't quite doing it right, so we were actually creating just as many problems by trying to solve as many problems. So we didn't, yeah, we made a lot of progress, but we also went and digressed in many areas too, where again, you, you mentioned the word sovereign to any police officer out there nowadays, watch what happens. 
Oh, another free man, are you? Great. They're literally smashing your window and dragging you out of the car. If they're not giving you a few of these on the way down to the ground, you go. So that was not a thing prior to, say, 10 years ago. If you said to a police officer, yeah, I'm a sovereign citizen, which is an oxymoron, the cop would have said, what the hell are you talking about? Right? There was nothing there. So within 10 years, we created this whole thing. And again, with the help of many, many other loved ones. But where I'm trying to go with this, people, is, yeah, there needs to be new leadership. People in this mindset and in this heart position that I'm referring to, the meek, these individuals who are to roll forward and inherit the earth, these are the ones that are going to be granted the control. These are going to be the ones that are granted the leadership positions. Because here's why. You can't go from shitty leadership to no leadership. You're just going to wind up with more shit, probably worse than what we had before. There needs to be a, a, a position in the middle here where can we finally please just put people with, with righteousness in positions of, I don't want to call it power, but let's just call it positions of influence. Because we all have the same power. We just don't know how to spin it or we don't know how to wave our little magic wand and make something go poof and make, you know what I mean? We don't know how to, we haven't been trained. We haven't gone to wizard school to figure out how to wield our equitable powers yet. Well, that's kind of what we're trying to do here. So I'm going to suggest at some level, anybody who's pursuing this program, and again, not just the divergence program, I'm talking about all, all the big hitters out there, everybody who's basically trying to shed light on this situation that we're all stuck in. Any of these individuals, they're all worthy in my, in my mind for leadership positions. But again, here's the thing about the leadership positions, though. It's going to be a bunch of people. It's not just going to be one. But when all these bunch of people all over the world are basically heading in the same direction and feeling and doing the same things through equity, this is what Christ was talking about. This is the second coming, loved ones. This is when 144 or 144,000 of us all seeking and doing equity with clean hands rises. That is the second coming. It's his spirit in you and in me. Finally breaking through the surface and standing and saying, ha ha, I have returned. Because it's from the stuff and the teachings and the doctrines and the jurisprudence and all that righteousness that that gentleman laid down. And again, I'm not, I'm going to suggest he's not even Christ himself. We've got to mix in some others here in, in history that have also played a, a, a major role in contributing. Moses, well, there's another good example. King David, I'm going to throw it out there that he was another one. So all these individuals are basically walking Christ consciousnesses. And I'm, I'm going to throw it out there that each and every one of us is also the same. That's why this equity resonates with us so well now. Again, we started out in the common law world where we were starting to get drips and we were starting to get little pieces of things, but those little pieces started to trigger little, little things in our mind and in our heart where these little things started to explode. These little explosions turned into like a tsunami where now, again, I can only really attest to what Dean and I went through. Our lives literally got committed fully. And I mean, fully, we lost everything and we did it with a smile on our face. knowing we don't care. Take our trucks, take our houses, take our, this, take our, that. Uh, -uh Cause at the end of the day, we know we're going to prevail. Where does this knowing come from? Well, here's another one. Loved ones. The first time I read the Bible, uh, I'm going to throw it out there, was about five years ago. That's it. I wasn't born and raised with this. Not at all. Dean and I led a very non-religious family life. I think I went to church twice. One for my one buddy's dad's funeral. And another time was for a Christmas party because a girlfriend I was dating when I was 22, her family was very religious. So I got dragged into a Christmas thing at their church. Other than that, loved ones, I had never been to church and I never read the Bible. I was actually introduced to equity and the common law and all this stuff first. So as soon as I start to understand what equity is, now I grab scripture and now I go looking. This is Indiana Jones style. I'm on a mission. Now I know exactly what I'm looking for. So that when these key phrases and these verses and these chapters all espousing equity, these things were literally jumping off the page at me. 
And then, you know, when the Bible talks about a whole bunch of other stuff, I'm like, okay, fluff, fluff, later, later, later. Don't worry about that. Don't worry. Aha, substance right there. Boom. Beautiful one. Fluff, fluff, substance, fluff, fluff, substance. I was able to just redline the Bible. Every, I can literally pick up a Bible right now, open it to any page and find equity in it. If there happens to be equity on that page, it's actually pretty easy once you develop these eyes. And whether that's because my eyeballs are a little bit more fine-tuned because of the artist skills I have, I don't know. But all I know is that I'm really good with color. I'm really good with shapes, structures, proportions, uh, perspective, these types of things. So now I'm able to look at this little book they called the Holy Bible. And I'm able to see layers. And I'm able to see depth. And I'm able to see all kinds of things that when I say, hey, uh, it, you know, let's say I was someone else is sitting here. I said, okay, what, what do you see when you read this? And they'd read it. And they'd be like, well, I don't know. I said, okay, see, boom, when I read it, and again, never having gone to church, why am I able to just go, blah, that's what that's saying with no formal training. Huh? <laughs> Where does this power come from? I don't know. And to be honest with you, I don't really care. All I know is that it's here. And all I know now is that it's up to us, each and every one of us, to develop this. All we're talking about here, loved ones, is love. <laughs> we were tricked into going back to Egypt. And I'm going to show you here right away in Gibson's book, when we start talking about resulting trust and constructive trust and trusts and trusts and, and who's the, this stuff. When we were bound as slaves in Egypt, ancient times, we had no rights at all. You were lucky if you got water today type of deal. Again, they did want performance out of the slaves, so they probably fed them not bad. They probably gave them water, not bad, like uh, these things. Because, again, these pyramids don't build themselves. These public citizens that are liable for this public debt, that's Egypt. That's Babylon. The Bible used to talk about, ha-ha, people rejoicing in the streets. Ha-ha, Babylon has fallen. No, it hasn't. We resurrect it. We bring Babylon, that whore, back to life. And we suckle from this whore our whole life. We bring Babylon back online. When we take that effing birth certificate and we go make application for that social number, boom. <laughs> you just created your own hell right there. It was sitting there. We didn't have to go through that door. We didn't have to accept it. We didn't have to want it. We didn't have to volunteer for it. And yet we did. Because again, our ministers, preachers, pastors, preachers, every Sunday, all these men and women, they don't know anything that we're talking about here. They don't know anything about commerce. They don't know what the Jesuits have done. They don't really know who Satan is. They don't really know what sin is. They think it's okay. I don't go steal a chocolate bar. That's a sin. Don't have lustful thoughts of your neighbor's wife, although she's pretty cute. Uh, that's a sin. This type of thing. Yes, these are all emotions that we learn to control as we mature. Again, you ask a 13-year-old to get his sexual desires under control. Ah, <laughs> tough. That's probably why I did so bad in science class. I'm just throwing it out there. Yeah, biology was cool, but I was really interested in the real biology, to be honest with you. Okay, so why and how does that tie into Gibson's book now and trust? So you know what? I think we got the leadership stuff covered because I really want to get into Gibson's books. If there's any further questions, again, feel free to ask. But you know what? I'm suggesting it's us. We are the new layer of leadership. None of us consume our offspring. None of us drink blood on Friday nights for something to do. Um, pedophilia, child trafficking, all this crazy shit. Like, ah, I'm going to just take it for granted that none of us are interested in that. That's a whole layer of filth that's about to be removed. Once that layer of filth is gone, now remember, loved ones, um, this is a lot. This layer is almost, I'm going to say, if I'm going to throw it out there, that is 90% of politicians belong to that layer of filth and have participated in these evil wrongdoings. If anyone has been following this, this uh, Jelaine Maxwell, Jeffrey Epstein's protege and colleague here with all this twisted shit going on, apparently the, her little black book's got over 2,000 names in it of high-ranking politicians and clergymen and police officers and oh, yeah, government officials, all of it. So that's just, that's 2,000. Why would they even be doing this? Well, here's why. They bring you to this island. They drug you. They make you do disgusting, horrible things. They videotape it. And now you're going to do exactly what they tell you to do or else they're going to release this shit to the public and you're going to jail at the very least. 
So now that they got this over you, this is very compelling to get all these assholes to serve the darkness. Now, again, I'm going to throw it out there that 90% of politicians are involved. That's a big freaking number. I know. There are some out there that are rogue warriors and are they're legitimately trying to change the system and their, their hearts are in the right place and, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, okay, well, I'm excluding those people. But all that filth, that's got to go. When that entire layer of filth is gone, who's going to step up to take over? Okay, I'm going to suggest artificial intelligence is going to play a big role. And then I'm going to suggest those with control and dominion fill in the gaps. That's us. We literally get our dominions back here, folks. Satan wanted our dominion. That's all he really desired. That's how he's able to keep us in Egypt. Because we had no power to leave. What we are suggesting here, loved ones, through equity is that we have actually found the way out. It's been there the whole time. But man, they buried this sucker. You'd want to talk about Indiana Jones and grabbing a shovel and digging in the sand? Yeah, we've been digging for a long time. And by we, I don't mean just me and Dean. I mean all of us. And by all of us, I'm going to suggest millions of us. And here, here's a funny story. Jody was asking this the other day. Darren, how come, given the impact and significance of the shit that you talk about all day, how can there only be 140 views on YouTube? You want to know why? Here's why. 15 years ago when Dean and I started this stuff, within the first month, YouTube, again, remember, the internet is fresh. It's just coming out. Very pe few people even know what the hell this thing is, how to use it, what an email is, or how, uh, uh, right? The, inter the internet is just, it just got here. Within the first month, Dean had 55,000 views when we started talking about this stuff. Month number two, 75,000 views. Month number three, we got up to like just under, just south of 100,000 views, okay? We wake up one morning, our 100,000 views is now 1,400. Like, mm, well, that's kind of strange. But again, <laughs> internet just, just got started. We thought, okay, well, this has to be a glitch. There has to be something that would cause that because that's, there's, there's, that's kind of weird. Long story short, two more times, our views got up to say like 60,000, then 49,000. And two more times after that, they knocked it back down to 1,100 or 799 or 2,136. And you know what? The views never go up. Why is that? <laughs> we know why. Because the system, oh, big tech, as Mr. Trump would call it, big tech will not let this get out as big tech is in place today. Big tech is here to oppress us. It's here to suppress us in all these very slave-like fashions. So even though, let's say, again, uh, given the significance of these impacts with these videos that we're talking about here, loved ones, is there really only 140 people watching these things? Not a chance. I have 140 personal friends that would have watched all these things and some. So don't let the views ever fool you into thinking, oh, maybe the shit Darren's talking about is garbage because he would have 100,000 views by now. Well, and again, here's other proof. Other certain gentlemen had came come forward several years, even five, six years after what Dean and I were talking about, the same stuff. So you have gentleman A comes out and literally just repeats a bunch of the same shit that Dean and I talked about. Now, this guy's all of a sudden got 234,000 views in, 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 the, in the course of a few months. So you see there. That tells me that the, the momentum is still there. But it's just others are being limited. We're being censored. So again, don't ever let this influence the, the, the strength of the truth, the way, the life. Because if you base you know, others' perceptions of you as to being very relevant to how you live your life, you're going to fail. Don't. Don't worry about those people. Again, Dean and I literally walked away from, from our entire immediate family. As soon as they started to think we were crazy, we just went, Grandma, get out of our way. We don't have time to give a shit what you think. She just passed not long ago. And I'm not trying to speak illy of the dead. I'm just saying, my grandma had no business trying to tell Dean and I what the hell to do. Neither did my grandpa, my parents, and aunts and uncles, and freaking everybody else. These are all collective sheep. Yeah, they're our family. How can you talk? You, they loved you. They really, yeah, 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 yeah. But that doesn't mean I'm going to live my life in a box 
and not do what I was put on this planet to do just because, just because these people think so. You know what? Get out of my way. Seriously. That's how much love there's lost here. I know what's true and important, and they weren't there. Again, we mention frequently, we have two families, loved ones. We have our earthly one, and we have our heavenly one. If you are going to just live your life and, and, and let your spirit be taken over by what your earthly family friends, loved ones, uh, friends, all, all of it. If you're going to literally just toss your life based on others' opinions, you technically got no business being here. I expect more of all of you. And by me, I mean all of us. We all have to rise. We all have to lay some smack down. We all have to put our foot down and say, enough. And here's how we put our foot down and say, enough. I'm just going to minimize this. Okay. I'm not sure what I did there. <laughs> Share. Share some screens. Suits and Chancery again. Okay. Oh, we're nice and big today. Okay, so again, today's morning, uh, this morning's episode was supposed to be talking about deeds. So we're just going to back that up one step. And we're going to start talking about trusts again. So we're going to talk about, you know, suits in relations to trusts. And here's the thing. Trusts, when you boil it down, it's describing a relationship. But you notice it's got the word ship in it again. So because it has the word ship in it again, we're already talking about admiralty law. Ships, vessels, the sea. The commercial seat. So let's just get right into this here because again, we, we deal a lot with express trust, resulting trust, and constructive trust. So let's just let Mr. Gibson summarize this. Now, what I should have did before I brought this screen up is showed you my actual physical Gibson's book. And this whole page, the whole freaking thing is highlighted. It was actually, it's, it's becoming such a waste of highlighter for me to be highlighting this gentleman's material it would actually be easier for me to highlight the shit that doesn't apply or highlight the stuff that we don't care about because I'll actually use up way less highlighters. That's how much meat there is here. So what is a trust? A trust in the most enlarged sense used in the equitable jurisprudence world anyway is a beneficial interest in property. Boom, that's all a trust is, a beneficial interest in property. Now, as we know, property means everything. Whether this property is real or personal, it is distinct from the legal possession and ownership thereof. Aha. What do you mean it's distinct? That means a trust is dealing with legal possession and ownership, but a trust, the equitable side, it's different. It's distinct. It's separate. So in trusts, the legal title and possession. Again, that's, that's definitely highlighted in the book I'm, lo I'm looking at. The legal title is the thing we are all in possession of due to our not knowing what to do with the birth certificate. Because we didn't know what to do with it, we were stuck with the legal title. And because you got the legal title, that means you're in possession of it. So when you got the legal title and the possession of the thing, of this legal property... Once this happens in one in one person or one individual, now you're called a trustee. You have the legal title and you actually have the legal title. <laughs> See what I mean? Legal title is kind of a, it's kind of a, an idea in your mind, but it can be reduced and put into writing. So when we're suggesting here that the trustee has in his mind what the legal title is, and he also has a piece of paper. Or a little piece of plastic that evidences a legal title. That is the trustee. Now, so he goes on to say, the equitable title and beneficial use of the same property are in another individual called a set of K trust or beneficiary. This set of K trust stuff, like, this is where our whole problem started. 1666, Great Fire of London, mixed the Black Plague in there. So many people died that they declared everybody dead. And whoever's left, come back and let us know through notice, properly notice, either the judiciary or 
the government, whatever you want to call it back in the day, let them know that this is what it is you're trying to do. So the trustee holds the direct, again, there's that word direct, and absolute dominion over the trust property. Well, wait a minute. Say that again. The trustee holds the direct and absolute dominion over the trust property. Oh, here you go. Yeah, this is why. In view of the courts of law. Ah, see there. That's why that kind of wasn't making sense. Because here I am talking about dominion. Now it's like, now it's saying, he's now saying that the trustee has the dominion. Okay, so wait a minute. So, Darren, you're saying as public citizens subject to courts of law, we are not the beneficiaries. We don't have dominion. And there's a big problem here. So that's why we're saying, hey, wait a minute, we want the dominion. Well, how do we get how do we get absolute dominion over the trust property? Well, first of all, we got to stay away from courts of law because here's why. While on the other hand, in the view of the courts of equity, the trustee is a mere steward to hold, manage, and account for the proceeds of trust property for the exclusive benefit of the beneficiary. <laughs> you know what that is? That's the complete opposite of how the at-law common law side does it, the legal side. Think of it like this, though. When we make application for that social number, you become the beneficiary of sin. <laughs> I don't want to be the beneficiary of sin. So this is why we have to spend so much energy trying to get these positions switched, get these placements recalibrated, reorganized. Uh, Your Honor, we got a confusion of titles here. So anyway, now we understand what a, what a trustee is supposed to be doing on the equity side. Now, this trustee is going to, you know, he's going to account for the proceeds of the trust property for the exclusive benefit of the beneficiary. In the sight of a court of law, <laughs> look at this, I'll say it again, in the sight of a court of law, again, legal common law, the beneficiary has no interest in the trust property. If the beneficiary has no interest in the trust property, he's got nothing. This is why us coming forward, fixing our trust property problem, naming or identifying who the beneficiaries are, becomes very, very, very important. Because otherwise, man, are we getting hung out to dry here so far. Continuing, while in the sight of a court of equity, the beneficiary has all the enjoyable interests. Boom! See? Black and white. Up and down, inside, outside. These two systems are completely the opposite of each other. And as a matter of fact, they don't like each other a whole lot. Why? Because equity is derived from real justice, the real stuff. Truth, honesty, integrity. Good dealings between a man and woman. Everything goes sideways when we bring corporations into this picture. Because now all of a sudden, a man or a woman through their little corporation, through a little piece of paper, now all of a sudden they have this incredible power over their neighbor. Equity looks at equity literally looks at that and says, ah, well, if that's the way you want to do it, sure. But you know, this corporate thing, again, this is something that we're gonna to have to deal with here soon because the way I see it, these assholes have used corporations to wreck the planet. And as, as a steward of the planet, that would be the only time I'm ever acting as a trustee for the planet. Creator gave us the planet in trust to look after it. Okay, so we're the trustees now. But that's, that's a whole other covenant. That's a whole other level. We don't really need to go there. So don't let that kind of bounce what the energies are that I'm trying to throw at you right here. So in short, the trustee holds the legal title and possession of the trust property, but all the benefits are rising from the property. It's income, profits, etc., belong wholly or in part to the beneficiary. As a general rule, 
property of every kind and form, whether it's real or personal, may be made subject of a trust. Now, this says my internet connection is a little unstable, so I'm going to say that again. Oh, where was I, though? Uh, as a general rule, property of every kind and form, real and personal, loved ones, that means everything, may be made subject of a trust. Any person who has the capacity to hold and dispose uh, see, that's why I use that word dispose a lot. To hold and dispose of property can impress a trust upon it. And generally, any person capable of holding property may be made a trustee or a beneficiary. Courts of chancery have exclusive jurisdiction over all matters arising out of trusts of all kinds, express, resulting, and constructive. Okay, let's just say that one more time here. Chancery has exclusive jurisdiction. This is why the assholes in control did everything they can to make sure that we don't have access to equity. Because once we start dropping trusts, once these trusts start to arise, equity is the only jurisdiction that has jurisdiction over these things. Why is that? Because technically, corporations cannot express trusts. Yeah, but Darren, I see on the public side that they do. Well, yeah, I know, but you know what? That's the illusion version of trusts. Again, fictions, dead things, creating what? Trust? Not a chance. How they're dead. Fictions can't create F all. They can't. They're dead. They have no life. They have no breath. There's no blood in them. They don't create nothing. Pieces of paper don't create nothing. Do you think a piece of paper creates your rights? No. You're born with it. If you had these rights in your mind, let's pretend there was no such thing as paper for just a moment. <laughs> Does that mean that none of us would have rights? <laughs> Clearly not. The word is still a very powerful mechanism here. I can, by my voice, implant a right into your brain. And then your heart's going to hear it and go, hey, what the hell is he talking about? And then all of a sudden you're going to perk up and you go, whoa, 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 whoa. How do I impress a trust upon any type of property? How do I dispose of that property? How do I, how do I, uh, lots of how do I's. <laughs> Cases of express trusts. Express trusts are those directly, uh, there's that word again, and affirmatively, that means positively, created and declared by who? The grantor or the settlor. Settlor and grantor are basically the same position. Did that say a trust can be created by the grantee? No. Can a trust be created by the beneficiary? No. How can there, ever, how can there even be a beneficiary if there's no trust? See, beneficiary doesn't exist. That's poof. Not there. Not real. It doesn't exist yet. You have to have a trust first. Out of that trust springs a beneficiary. <laughs> See? Same idea as when our birth certificates are, 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 are issued and put in the mail, they had to have an account first. There's a bank account somewhere. Where's this bank account? Well, treasury is definitely involved. The consolidated revenue fund and the assurance funds are definitely all mixed in all this thing. This, this idea of an account is very encompassing. This account had to exist first so that it had the reason or the evidence of uh, something, something happened here, some kind of deposit happened. So now this certificate is generated. The certificate cannot exist without the account. Apple and the cart. Grantors, settlers, same word. But look at look what we're doing. Look what we're going to do right here, though. Okay, so that's one way that a trust can be formed. So this is why Dean and I were so big on the grantor beneficiary stuff back in the day. Number two, trust can also be created and declared by a court or by operation of law, coupled with the assent of the person assuming the duties of the trust. The trusts devolved on special commissioners. So what does that say? Trusts devolved. It's almost like you create this thing and then you let it flow down. And you wait for the special commissioners, the receivers, 
clerks, clerks, what do you mean clerks? And other persons appointed. Ah, who does the appointing? <laughs> we do. To do some act or series of acts for another's benefit are instances where express trusts are created by a court. So we show up. At, Your Honor, as a result of me perfecting my interest in a particular certificate with the express intentions of creating a trust, I come now as the grantor settlor to convey this package and assign it to the new trustees. That's what devolving is. When I said earlier, Your Honor, by my own devise, I devised this whole scheme. Because it's a devise, because I devised it, it can devolve. So you notice here, though, they're, they're talking about, okay, once we get this trust created, we want to be homing in on special commissioners, receivers, clerks, and other persons appointed to do some acts. This is where I'm suggesting, loved ones, lawyers are sitting in a perfect position to be appointed trustees of our trusts. They're already trained in the legal world. They already know how that system works. Oh, look at this. This thing goes on to say, uh, the duties devolved by statute upon who? Administrators, executors, guardians. Ooh, we were just talking about that the other day. And public officers, especially those who give official bonds. Any public officer who officially gives a public bond, they are a sitting duck. <laughs> They're a sitting duck and it's express trust hunting season. See where I'm going with this one? And for this type of engagement, you don't need to go down to your local hardware store or your hunting outfitters and apply for a license to appoint a lawyer to be your trustee. They think they've got this lofty position through power, wisdom, and knowledge, and they are the be-all, end-alls. As a matter of fact, I remember back in the day there where, I guess this was online somewhere somehow, where someone was talking to a lawyer and the lawyer was making public statements about the shit Dean and I were doing. And this lawyer goes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah that, that sovereign free man movement, all that bullshit. Yeah, yeah. The lawyers took control and the lawyers shut it all down. See, these people believe they are they're on this lofty pedestal. They're at the top of the mountain. And that they just dictate. They're the ones that make the rules. They're the ones that make the laws. Everything devolves. Everything evolves around, around them. And you know what? I'm going to suggest that's absolutely true in the legal world. Lawyers have a pretty bona fide position. They can do some stuff that we don't have the ability to do. But that's on the legal side. Now, because... They have all given an official bond to be in their position, and they've sworn an oath to serve the Bar Association. Again, this is why I'm saying on the equity side, they're all sitting ducks. Walk up to a lawyer. Ha ha, surprise. Congratulations. What's your name? Stand there with your clipboard. What's your name? Uh, yep, yeah, that's you. Yeah, you've been duly appointed uh, representative trustee of a trust. Expressed in nature, it's over. As long as you duly appoint them. And according to my little piece of paper here, maybe this is your trust deed. Yeah, yeah, you qualify, uh, Mr. Lawyer. You're the guy. You're the girl. <laughs> Take this. Boom. And as such, I need you to do the following. Imagine having millions of servants out there just waiting. For us to walk up to them and say, Tag, you're it. We had to get this person off of us, first and foremost. That's how the lawyers control us because we took their person and we put that suit on ourselves. Because we're wearing this costume, as soon as you're out in the public, a lawyer can identify you in a crowd. No problem. Hey, you, you, you trustee. 
do the following, go to jail, pay your speeding tickets, whatever it is, put on a mask. As the trustee, you got to do what you're told. You have no choice. So I love this sitting duck idea. Again, we're coming from a place of love and peace though. So I don't, this is, we're not talking about firearms here. We're talking about the power of a pen and paper combining to convey your brain and heart onto a piece of paper and now sticking it on an attorney. And this is why scripture says, <laughs> woe unto ye lawyers. Yeah, you might control the show for a couple thousand years or more. But when my chosen ones, when the special seeds that I plant figure out your shit show, look out. Because for you, for me, okay, pretend I'm God. For me to allow you to get away with that shit for 2,000 years means it's only fair that once my children figure it out, they're going to bind you for 2,000 years. Otherwise, no deal. You can't do your, your 2,000 years of reign. Reign of terror. I'll let you do it, though. I'll let you punish my children. I'll let you kill my children. I'll let you do all that. Because at the end of the day, when they come back to me, I'm going to reappoint them. I'm going to reclassify them. I'm going to put them back out there. But this time, I'm going to improve them. So that when they wake up someday here in those days, they are going to have the, the power to officially bond you. Now, again, this is why the legal system, the outlaw system, the common law system does not like trusts. They do not like not being the beneficiary. Again, this is what I'm saying here, loved ones. When we go to jail, we're called the trustee. If we're the trustee, who's the beneficiary? The state, the crown, the corporation is the beneficiary. So now, okay, so the most common cases wherein a court of chancery is called upon. So there you go again, called. I was just talking about that yesterday. We're calling. I'm calling on you. I'm duly appointing you. You don't have the power to run away from what I'm doing to you. There's no place to hide. I got you. As soon as I got your name. And so if, if I know where you work or if I know what law firm you're, you're serving, that's all we need. Okay, so again, this is where we're talking about relationships, relations to express trusts. Okay, so again, we have to, we got party A and party B. We have to describe the relation. What's the arrangement between these two? Why do you have this power and that party doesn't? What's the, what's going on here? And this is why the courts need to understand. And they only understand when we bring our paperwork to them. Again, the courts don't operate on any presumptions other than this, the court of itself will not presume a party to have a better title or a better claim to equity than that which the party he himself discloses. They're not going to presume you have all this trust knowledge. They're not going to presume you've perfected an interest in a birth certificate. They're not going to presume you've created a deed and trust, a resulting trust. They're not going to presume, presume any of this stuff, nor should they. It's up to us to come forward and, and, and prove this stuff. Show the judge why you're entitled. And this is important. This is where priority comes from. This is where if the judge can't see your interests, if the judge can't see your equitable pleadings, if the judge can't see your intent to create a trust, equity can't help you. Get out of chancery. Go back to public world. So this is why our due diligence, loved one, is so important. This is why us actually getting off of our asses and doing stuff. It's so important. This stuff doesn't just fall in our lap. It doesn't just fall in our lap. I want specific loved ones to hear this one. Yeah, I'm providing a lot of meat and potatoes for everybody. I'm basically cranking out documents A to Z. So all you have to do is sign it. But what I also am going to suggest here is you got to do some work. You got to put a little bit of brain into this. You got to try a little bit harder. You got to put more effort in because you are the one that has to rise. I know scripture said that I was supposed to descend down unto you, but that doesn't make a lot of sense when you think about it. How about I meet you halfway? I'll descend. Eh, 
half out of the clouds. Maybe we'll just kind of hang at an altitude of, I don't know, maybe 5,000 feet. I need you to figure out how to get 5,000 feet vertical. We only get there by doing this stuff. Now, this is where it's beautiful. Now that there are so many people doing this, we can have intelligent conversations between hundreds of people at the same time. And we all kind of know what the hell it is we're talking about. I remember back in the day when we first started this, no matter who Dean and I talked to, nobody had an effing clue what any of this shit was. I mean, any of it, not a single word of it. Dean used to do a seminar for three days and people would leave after 36 hours of bombardment. They would leave more confused and more pissed off and frustrated than when they got there. Why? Because Dean had risen to a level of knowledge, a level of wisdom. And yet the message of that energy still resonated with millions of people. Yeah. I love what that guy's saying. I'm going to look into this stuff. That would be a man or a woman rising to the occasion right there. This is why this thing was so infectious. That's why this thing was so enduring. That's why this thing was so compelling. That's why this thing enchanting. Okay, there you go. There's the word. <laughs> so that's why, again, we struck a chord and we were sloppy with it. We were trying to perform delicate surgery with an ax. Mm. Lo and behold, fast forward 10 years, here we are though. So now we're coming forward and saying, look, I, I'm not going to be the trustee no more. I only, I understand I am the trustee because of my own default, because I didn't express a trust. Their shitty little implied trust made me the trustee. Okay. So now we come forward and we express our own trust. We say, no, no, no. If I'm the trustee, I can literally take this off and give it to that man or woman. Aha, you got the trustee sweater on now, not me. Once we name them to be trustees, they are to pay over an account to those who are entitled to the trust funds or other property that are or should be in their hands. Again, we should have always had the equitable interest, but Caesar and Satan and other assholes you know, just conveniently took it away from us and tricked us into giving it to them. Again, because of that trick, because we volunteered, we actually can't hold them liable. We can't say, you asshole, look what you made me do. It doesn't work like that. He or she just stands back and says, what are you talking about? That was your decision. I had nothing to do with it. Yeah, but you told me I couldn't get a job if I didn't get this number. If you, if you thought you needed a job, well, you, then you based all your actions on your own accord. So be it. This is why the scriptures are always... Is, I would love to know how many times the word wisdom shows up in, in the King James Version. I'm going to say it appears a lot. In the hundreds, I'm going to suggest. Wisdom, knowledge the right way, all of these things. This is why the Bible was so important to us. I know it's been cut apart and, and twisted and turned and, and evil hands have corrupted it. Maybe to a certain level, but you know what? When I picked that book up and I started reading it, my life changed in a, in a heartbeat. I instantly felt the message. I instantly knew what the hell was going on. Despite the assholes trying to obscure it, I saw it like that. So they obviously didn't fuck it up too bad. Again, I'm the guy that didn't go to high school. And if I can read it and I, if I can make sense of it, then shit, anybody can, really. Hey, Darren. So, yeah. It pops up 222 times, the word wisdom. See, now, is that by design or is that like, or is that a fluke? See? <laughs> Come on. Thanks, Kim. Uh, so we are, look at this. So we're going to compel again. Compel is a, is a, is a, a loving way of saying force. <laughs> we're going to force executors, administrators, guardians, receivers, clerks, and all the, uh, and all the other express trustees to account for these trust funds. And we're going to compel all these persons to faithfully execute and carry out their trust duties of every character whatsoever. What does that mean in normal language? That means we can get them to do anything we want. Anything. Take that with a grain of salt, though. Don't abuse it. And when necessary, to remove them and appoint other trustees and to advise and direct executors, administrators with the will 
Now, again, I just want you to know, you're going to see here right away, wherever we see the word will, put the word trust there instead. A will is for someone when they die. A trust is for someone when they're living. That's why they wanted us to appear to be this dead thing so that we couldn't express a trust. All we, all we had is a will. And when you're a public citizen, whose will do you have? Don't say your own, because it's not. You got the public's will. That's all you got. And trust me, it's shitty. There's nothing effing good in it. You don't want it at all. I'd rather have nothing than the public will. So now we're talking about, so a trust is annexed. Annexed means attached. And other trustees as to the, as to the construction or execution of a complicated or obscure will or, tr there it is right there, an obscure will or other trust instrument. So again, when they, Gibson just equated the two right there, a will or trust, it's the same thing. Especially where there is contention among the beneficiaries. Okay, that doesn't mean anything. That we don't need to worry about that. Okay. Frame and forms of express trusts. Um, I got the first line and a half here highlighted. All express trusts result from relations. Which is why it's important we express our relations. I am this man or woman. I was born on this day. I had a relationship with the state. I had intercourse with the state when I took their number and used it for my own greed and as such volunteered to commit sin. Oopsie doops. Okay, so this goes on to say, okay, so uh, the defendant, he's talking about the complainant in here, but at the very end here, we're going to bring this deed of trust. We're going to bring this trust and we're going to, we're going to bring this thing to the court. We're going to pray to the court for redress of the wrongs complained of as suffered. What are the wrongs complained of? Well, your honor, due to my own negligence, due to my own unknowing, due to my own ignorance, due to my own lack of giving a shit, I didn't know what I was signing up for when I was 16-ish. And as a result of not knowing what I was doing, I would like to come forward and pray that I may be given equitable relief to fix that problem, mistake, error, or fraud. When you come forward and say, look, I'm sorry, I stole a chocolate bar. Take two chocolate bars in return. Please forgive me. If that man or woman doesn't forgive you, they're actually in shit now. Because you came with good intent, you came with clean hands, and you came with more substance than that which you stole. Am I suggesting you're still you're 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 out of your your punishment? No, I'm not suggesting you're going to be relieved of punishment. But the fact that you came forward and admitted a, admitted a mistake and tried to correct it, that is the sign of an honorable man or woman. When an honorable man or woman puts their heart into all this freaking paperwork and tries to under tries to digest and, and, and comprehend all this crazy wording that I keep talking about. This is where a man or woman is going to prove his or her trustworthiness. The public is not interested in whether you're trustworthy because you're deemed to be dead. You can't trust a dead guy. How's that going to work? See? Come on. Uh, so anyway, we're talking about financial liability here to order an account when necessary to ascertain the defendant's financial liability and to render a money decree against him when he is liable. Guess who's liable? As soon as you take that birth certificate with a coin and you express it under a trust agreement and stick it to a clerk, a lawyer, a public officer, a public official, anybody serving the public is volunteering to be made a trustee of a trust. So isn't this neat how for two and a half thousand years, these assholes had all the power. Now we come along, we take it all back. So if they had all the power, now they got none. Who's got the power? We do. Simple. The power must lie or must be somewhere. Equity actually says though, yeah, the trustees, they still have a little bit of power. Once you come forward and you do all this equitable stuff, the trustees can sell things. The trustees can rent things. The trustees can make property deals on your behalf. The trust can handle money. The trustees can deal with all these matters, all in good faith. And this is why the judges are in the background watching all this stuff. 
Okay, so when we were talking about a bill of ward against his guardian, remember the other day I was talking about guardian and ward? <laughs> Again, change the word bill. So make it say this, petition of ward against his guardian or against her guardian. That the ward, you, became entitled to a valuable estate. Stop. How do you become entitled to a valuable estate? The last three weeks of us doing this stuff is clearly expressing and explaining how we become entitled. We become entitled the moment that we have enough knowledge to express a trust. Now, again, there's four key components to a trust. I haven't really talked about them yet, but I'm going to hear in the next little bit. Once we come forward and express any property, again, remember any property, personal or real, that's any property. It's even an idea. You can express an idea and wrap a trust around an idea. Now, no one else can touch that idea. It's kind of like a patent, but a lot better. So I just like the way that this is laid out here. So that, you know, again, the ward, you became entitled to a valuable estate. And as distributee of the estate, don't worry about this father part. Don't worry about being a minor and all this kind of stuff for the other all we're suggesting, though, is, hey, I was the ward. I'm now giving bond to the public trustee. And as such, that public trustee as defendant owes me something. Because I'm the surety. I have the power to make these decisions if I want to. Everybody is a surety to their own birth certificate. I'm not a surety to yours, and you're not a surety to mine. We all have this little, beautiful little thing Again, a curse or a blessing, depending on, depending on how we used it, which is what makes it fair, loved ones. This thing is as evil as you can possibly imagine, or it's as loving and graceful and so close to God. On the other hand, that's why this whole thing, this whole lifestyle, literally, of people like us trying to figure out what the hell this birth certificate is and what do we do with it, this whole movement is a big deal. Figuring out that we were the ward as part of a guardian and ward relationship really was part, partly really going to bring us into a dialed situation where we can start to understand what the heck it is that's going on here. Um, okay, hang on. I just want to go back to page 715. There's a goodie here. I just blew through. That should be this one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, number two. Yes. Okay. So you notice to enforce marriage settlements, mortgages, and trust deeds to secure debts. A trust deed is the birth certificate. They gave it to us under a mortgage. We're now declaring it to be a trust, but actually at the end of the day, loved ones, it's still technically a mortgage because once it's deemed to be a mortgage, it's always a, it's always a mortgage. It's like, you gave me a death pledge. Well, I'm going to take that death pledge off and I'm just going to stick it on you, trustee. What do you think of that? That's all we're doing. But look at this though. To secure debts, any debt out there. And again, you know, I know if you're in the banking world or if you're a real estate agent, you're going to understand this a little bit better than most people. You're going to understand what, you know, equity in your home is talking about. Well, a lot of people think that that means, well, I've owned this home for five years. I've cut the grass. I've painted the fences. I, I did a little bit of drywalling inside. The wife had me redo the kitchen floor. And a result of all that, this home is technically worth about $15,000 more than it was when I got it. So therefore, I can now cash in on that $15,000 worth of value. And I can go to a bank and say, here, take my effort and give me the fifteen grand." And the bank will say, okay, these are home equity type loans. I mean, this is a thing. The banks will actually do this for you. But again, loved ones, this is one variation of the word equity and how it applies to your home. This is what, what the real estate agents are taught when they go to realtor school. This is what we're taught when we go to public school. This is what lawyers are taught when they go to law school. This is why Divergence and others out here who have truly unraveled what equity really is, we're actually going to take that Rather than go to a bank and say, hey, uh, give me $15,000 for my sweat equity here I put into my house, we're going to say this. Upon conversion of the note, 
I'm coming forward as the beneficiary, having established and attached consideration to collateral, I have now privately funded that mortgage. And as a result, I own it. It's my mortgage. It's no longer the bank's. It's yours. Technically, now the bank can't profit from it. You can now call in your note. You can say, hey, bank, you got X amount of days. You got, you got 30 days to produce the note because I'm foreclosing. Once you have the power as the equitable title holder, you can foreclose on the whole freaking mortgage. Don't worry about trying to get $15,000 because you painted the fence for a couple of years. Now, convert the entire note that created the mortgage in the first place. Ah, that's what the real equity of redemption is. And this is what, these are some of the things that nobody out there knows. Yeah, trust uh, real estate lawyers. They sort of know this stuff, but they're not going to tell you. Why? Because you appeared in his law office acting in person. This is why lawyers ask to see your ID before they do anything for you. Okay, I'm just going to need to make a copy of this. I'll be right back. They literally take your ID into a room in the back there. They photocopy it. And they turn it into some type of a, a relationship. Well, this individual appeared before me today, acting in person, seeking legal advice. He didn't talk trusts. He didn't talk equity. He wasn't private at all. Therefore, Mr. Lawyer, Mrs. Lawyer, can treat the man or woman who wants to get a a loan or a, a court case going. This is why the lawyer must establish whose identity are you coming in. Now, this is important later. Again, I, this sounds like I'm just rambling a little bit, but this is important because that man or woman who walked into that law office did not come with clean hands at all. They're filthy. And as such, the lawyers treat them as filth. Okay, so 927. This is where we start getting into some of this trust stuff. Check this out. All expressed trusts result from relations and references made to the various preceding sections treating the relations in the framing of the petition. Whoever is drafting this petition will state the relation of the defendant to the petitioner as shown in the preceding section and state how this relationship was created. Again, Mom and dad gave me a birth certificate, said it was mine, then I took it and made application to the state for certain stuff. There, that's you exp explaining a relationship. The judge is actually going to want to know some of these things. And we'll show that, and what, what equitable estate is being complained of and how the defendant is liable for it. And in what particular or particulars the defendant has failed to do his duty towards the petitioner in reference to the said life estate. And now we're going to pray to the court to redress the wrongs that the petitioner has suffered and compel, force the new trustees to faithfully discharge his trust and to order an account when necessary to ascertain the defendant's financial liability and to render a money decree against him that he is liable thereto. Again, it's a lot of fancy language saying that, hey, once we express these trusts, they're stuck. And because they're stuck, we can demand all kinds of stuff. It's fun. This is why, you know, scripture and equity talks about the equitable interest beneficial title holder enjoys, is happy. There's no more death. There's no more destruction. There's no more sickness. There's no more, none of that stuff. So I've got another couple of blurbs here. I'm going to go right to page 930. Again, this is all going to be posted for everyone to have eyeballs on. Um, but again, just look at, look at the wordings here. The premise, considering the premises or the premises considered, the petitioner prays. Number one, that process issue to bring the defendants into court and make them answer this petition. I'm just saying, just again, look at the way some of this language flows. This stuff is beautiful. Uh, what was I looking for here? 928, 930. You know what, for a second, hang on. I'm, I'm going to just touch on this one. I think this is it right here. Uh, four, is this four? Where is it? Uh, hang on, just give me one second, because this is actually worth it. Uh, 
see if I can find it. trust. Okay, yeah, it's paragraph for below this. I added this one. After stating all the various parts, where does it say this? After stating all the various parts. Uh, this shouldn't be this hard. See, this is my fault, loved ones, for not having this prep before I rolled with it. But you know what? Again, just give me one second here because this is worth it. It's here somewhere. So don't kill it. No, that's okay. Ah, you know what? I'm going to read it. It's in here. Just find this. This is on page 718. So why I'm not seeing that is beyond me. And okay, the last one. I'm going to give this one more shot. See? Look at that. It's right here. Okay. After stating all the various parts of the trust, again, see, will or trust, needing construction and giving fairly and fully the contentions of those interested in the construction and after the usual prayers for pro process, then add this. This is the, the ending of your deed of trust, of your petition. Use these wordings. Com uh, petitioner or complainant further prays that the said will or trust be established and the trust therein performed and the rights and interests of all parties of, under the same be declared. The complainant further prays to the court to construe the aforesaid portions of the will or trust and to state clearly what the petitioner's duties there are and what rights of the contending defendants are, and if any, thereunder, and in order that the petitioner may be relieved from all risks and liabilities incident to the contentions. You know what that just said right here? To be relieved of all risk and liability. That means you got that. There's that's your get out of jail free card. That does not mean go rob liquor stores. And conflicting rights and claims of the defendants, he prays the court to retain the cause in the court until the said will or trust shall have been fully executed and performed, and all of the petitioner's duties and trusts fully executed and performed to the end that the petitioner may then also obtain his discharge as executor or administrator with the trust annexed and his release from all liability as such thereafter and for such and further and other relief as he may be entitled to. That is one of the most loaded paragraphs I've ever read. Because it's at the tail end of everything you're pleading, of ever, everything that you're manifesting, of all the truths you're trying to bring to the court in your affidavit. When you finish it with this, twice it says you're going to be relieved. You're going to be released of all legal duty. That means you no longer have to pay the debt. If you no longer have to pay the debt, who pays the debt? Oh, that little birth certificate right there with the silver coin attached to it. That is a genie in a bottle. You go get a mortgage for a house. You say, hey, genie, see this mortgage? Make this go poof. Genie says, aye, aye, captain, poof. Here's the thing with this genie bottle, though. We have a lot more than three wishes. We don't have to wish for more wishes as one of the three wishes. Okay, so I'm just going to spin right down here to the resulting trust because this is pretty meaty. This is why I'm suggesting... As soon as we start to do this, a trust results based on what it is we're trying to do by stepping forward and expressing all this stuff, loved ones. A resulting, any resulting trust, a resulting trust are those which arise where the legal estate is disposed of or acquired. Aha. Trickery. Here's word trickery. How do you dispose of the thing if you hadn't acquired it? Aha. This is where Dean and I got burnt for years and we didn't know it the whole grantee grantor thing as the grantor trying to dispose of the thing 
you hadn't acquired it in the first place to grant it or settle it. <laughs> so there you go. Even in Gibson's book here, there's still word trickery. You got to acquire the interest or the estate before you dispose of it. Again, we're doing all this without bad faith. Believe it or not, when we made application for that social number, that is an act of bad faith. That's why you're all being punished. Slowly, you know, a thousand cuts, one cut at a time. You're bleeding a little bit. Every day you bleed a little more. You bleed a little more. That's bad faith. And under such circumstances that equity infers or assumes that the beneficial interest in the estate is not to go with the legal title. I think I've got that highlighted like several times. The beneficial interest is not to go with the legal title. You legal titleians, you, you don't get the equitable stuff. I, you, we keep that. You're happy? Yeah, you got what you need. And I, we got what we need. Everyone's happy. The trust, these trusts are sometimes called presumptive trusts, but you know what? Don't even worry about that unless you feel that this tickles you. Because the law presumes them to be intended by the parties from the nature of and character of their transactions. Nature and character. Duality. The man and woman. The character is the person. There. More tricky words. You got to show up naturally. And again, when you see that word natural person, still stay away from it. Because it's got the word person attached to it, I don't care if it's natural or artificial. I'm staying away from it. Uh, you'll never see me use the words a natural person. Wrong. Does the Bible say God hates fucking persons? Oh, well, except for the natural ones, of course. No. Resulting trusts arise when property is conveyed or devised. That's why you're the devisee. Let me chew on that one for a bit now that I'm thinking about it. Are you the devisee here or the devisor? I don't know. We're one of these two. We'll chew on it a little bit. But again, under my devise, I devised the thing. I created this thing. Therefore, we're good to go. On some trust which fails in whole or in part, when the land is conveyed to a stranger without any consideration. When these things, move, when these trusts, when these titles move around without consideration, that's what makes this trust fail. We're literally operating in a failed trust as public citizens because when we made application for that trust number, did you get a check? Did they give you a silver coin? Did they give you a gold coin? Did they give you a silver certificate? Did they give you anything of value? No. Therefore, you entered into a, an agreement that's literally stealing your life for no consideration. You did it for free. You did it voluntarily equity and our creator are saying, well, the only, man, the only way a man or woman would ever do that is if they were not in their right mind and if they were possessed by spirits of darkness. And if they're possessed by Satan, we can't help them. They got to break that possession first. So when land is conveyed to a stranger with, with for nothing and without any use or trust declared, where the property is purchased and the title taken in the name of one person, but the purchase price is paid by another. Interesting. Where the purchaser pays for the land, but takes the title. Interesting. In whole or in part, in the name of another. A little bit kind of weird, but if you just read that a couple of times, it's going to start to make sense. A petition to establish a resulting trust. You know, in our petition paperwork, where yesterday, where we had some of those, those titles, uh, we had um, petition made at chambers without notice. Put under that, petition to establish a resulting trust. Boom, that's the title of your petition. Now, look at this. No one, that means no one, okay, nobody. Nobody is presumed to intend to part with his or her property and especially his land, without some type of payment. And he who furnishes the consideration or the money is presumed to intend to acquire a corresponding beneficial interest in the land purchased. 
So again, right here, no one is presumed to part with any of your rights, anything that you were born with. Imagine, imagine giving away your birthright. You know, what, what was it? Uh, uh, was it E? I forget his name. The E guy in the scripture there that, that parted with his birthright. He sold it to his brother for a bowl of oatmeal. What was his name? E what? Uh, I forget. One of you Bible people will know. Okay, at least he got a bowl of oatmeal for it. We gave ours away for nothing. And equity says, yeah, that was such a shitty deal. We're here on standby to let you undo that mistake as soon as you figure it out. Because you are literally dying. You're literally being put to death a little bit every day. And you don't even know it. Equity hates that. Equity hates that forfeiture. So we had, okay, so there, above there, right, we had a, a petition or a bill establishing what? A resulting trust. Now check this out. Now we have a decree. Esau. Yeah, I knew it was E something. Okay, Esau. A decree establishing a resulting trust. Okay, so we start with the petition establishing the resulting trust. And now here's our decree establishing the resulting trust. Now look at some of this wording. It's beautiful. This is how your court order should read. Even though I was talking about orders sought last night in the petition class, I would strongly suggest you add wording that sounds just about like this. On consideration whereof the court is of the opinion and doth the judge and decree that the tract of land, okay, change that, decree that the personal property described in the petition was purchased and paid for by the petitioner with petitioner's money, given him, the petitioner, a trust, and that therefore an equitable title to the said personal property, again, because remember, you're no longer in possession of that personal property. Someone else has it. That's why a trust arises. How do you how do you create a trust when you keep everything? This is where Dean kind of missed the ball a little bit in oh, some of these past years. Again, I can bash Dean all I want. Why? Because he's my brother. Nobody else can. I create a trust because I don't have something anymore. I'm entrusting you to look after it. Dean wanted to keep the birth certificate. Mine. Precious. No trust was actually ever created. Because A, he maintained possession of the thing. And B, he never assigned the legal interest in it to a new trustee. So despite Dean's accolades and all the awesome things he did, we still fell incredibly short when it came to actually expressing a proper trust. So... Again, I'm going to encourage you loved ones just to go through all this stuff and read this at your own pleasure here because this is going to really start to break down why constructive trusts are so-called constructive trusts. Why? Because they're constructed by the courts. Of who? Equity. Did it say right there, a constructive trust is created by the common law system? No. What's this for? These trusts created by the courts of equity are in order to satisfy the demands of justice. Ooh, that's a heavy statement. You're not getting any justice at all as a public citizen if you have not declared and created a trust. No justice for you. When you go to public court, yeah, some asshole stole my car last night and I'm going to court to get a new car, I guess. That's not justice. Why? Because you actually didn't own the car. You went to court saying, Someone stole a car the queen owns, and I want it back. Uh, it gets real sideways real quick, real fast. Now, again, because of the insurance system and because of the, the to keep the illusion going, this guy's going to get a new car somehow. But look at this one. Um, okay, so to the demands of justice, without reference to any presumable intention of the parties they include <laughs> where a person procures where an individual captures where an individual acquires the legal title to property in violation of some duty expressed or implied to the true owner 
So you see what happens here? We wind up taking a legal title when we shouldn't have. That was actually a violation of our God-given duties. We weren't supposed to do that. Whether this was expressed or implied, because the true owner was the state. And where the title to this property is actually obtained by fraud. We are literally obtaining titles to property through fraud, every one of us. That's why the state can come in and take everything away whenever they want. They can take your children. They can take your cat or your dog. They can go into your fridge, take everything. They can take your car. They can take your house. They can take you. <laughs> or other inequitable means or where a person makes use of some relation of influence or confidence to obtain the legal title upon a more advantageous term that could otherwise have been obtained or where a person acquires property with notice that another is entitled to its benefits. This is all violations of what we're supposed to be doing. So again, this is, you're, we're actually kind of reading this like inside out. So anyway, in all of these such cases, equity for the purposes of doing justice in the most efficient manner, constructs a trust out of the transaction and makes a trustee out of the person, thus acquiring the legal title. The court will create a trust as soon as the court can see that some trustee is actually in possession or has acquired the legal title because you assigned it to him. This is super, super, super beefy, heavy-duty language. But at the end of the day, you can see why the moment we express these trusts properly, the moment that we add the coin to the certificate, get it out of your possession, the judges will now act in your favor. They will not touch you with a 10-foot pole when you show up acting in person. So... Where the legal title is to, to property, right? All property has a legal title of some kind. So where the legal title to property is held merely as a security, the legal, prop the legal title to property is a security. You all have a security in your back pocket. You all have a legal title attached to that security. As when an absolute deed is really a mortgage. What's the absolute deed? Well, the deed, the first one, the original deed, birth certificate stuff. Part of our deed that we're creating now. Your Honor, I declare this special deed to be a mortgage in equity. See, this is what we're saying. It's actually still a mortgage. Remember, 1933-ish, they took all of our property rights away from all of us under a mortgage. So this thing's already a mortgage. So where it's once a mortgage, it's always a mortgage. We can, we can express trust relations to it, but technically, at the end of the day, it's actually still a mortgage. Uh, so this just goes on to say a bunch of stuff. Uh, undertakes to buy in property for the debtor or for his heirs for the benefit of a creditor. That's us technically now. Uh, where a trustee wrongfully acquires the trust property by purchase from himself or otherwise. See, they're not allowed to do that. Where a person acquires trust property with notice or without consideration, where a personal representative pays some other party or distributees before the creditor. Again, this is all just as layers and layers and layers of gar garbly goop that's talking about trusts, the relationships between beneficiaries and trustees. But again, the meatiest part of this stuff was at the beginning there when we were talking about what a trust is and how it can be applied to any type of property at all. A petition to enforce a constructive trust by having a deed declared a mortgage. <laughs> There's another beautiful title you might want to stick in your petition. Again, I didn't have that in the ones that we were dealing with here in the last couple of days, but I'm going to add one or two of these here in the future so that this working document, as new people come in, they see this, they can have eyes on in a much more streamlined affair because then they're going to say, oh, what the hell is a constructive trust? I'm going to go research that one a little bit. Boom. 
They're going to run into all this stuff. Uh, look at this. Where a device or legacy has been prevented by fraud. Our fraud prevented our legacy from happening. We've all got a life legacy. Each and every one of us has one of these things. But as soon as you volunteered to become a public person, you took your life legacy and you put it in a garbage bag and you threw it out to the curb. And then you waited for the garbage man to come take it away. And you expressed, you actually didn't care. We only didn't care because we didn't know. <laughs> There's a lot of meat in here, folks. Um, a lot of little micro examples of what to do and what to put in some of our trust expressions. Again, like this is how... Gibson gives us nice little templates here too, that on the day after the said agreement had been made, I got arrested for speeding. <laughs> Point is, take some of these wordings, get familiar with some of these sentences. Look how this flows back and forth and practice it. Write documents, loved ones. I've, I've probably written, I'm going to say 12 feet high. If you were to take pieces of paper and stack them, reams of paper that I've over the years, dealt with trying to create all this stuff trying to get all of our, our intents expressed to a judge especially when you're about to go to jail or when you're in jail the amount of paperwork that that has gone into this stuff is mind-bending but pay particular attention to this stuff you know uh your morning coffee or whenever you got a moment to um put eyeballs on i suggest you do i kind of stopped highlighting after those little sections there I was just talking about, because again, there's just so much to highlight in here. This is what a judge is going to say. This is what a court is going to say. On consideration whereof it is ordered, a judge and decreed. Use that sentence. We write our own orders. Once we write our own orders, the clerk or the judge looks at it and just approves it. And if we're close, not quite, they'll make adjustments and then grant the order. We write the orders. So start yours with that. That's a dynamite way of doing it. That the deed referred to in the pleadings was intended as and is merely a security for the money advanced and the notes signed by the defendant as surety and is declared to be, in equity, a mortgage. So it shifts gears here a little bit where it says that the, that the claimant is liable to the defendant only for the sums paid by the... Da, 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 da. You're actually going to develop these equity eyes where you can start to say, okay, well, that doesn't really apply to what we're doing, and that doesn't really apply to what we're doing. But it is further ordered and adjudged and decreed that the said value... Um, the consideration is a lien <laughs> on the said personal property or chattels real or real estate. And that, unless, and accruing an interest are paid into the court. Again, there's a nice little nugget. We're trying to literally pay this stuff into the court so the judge can actually help us. Now, they're just talking about terms of the court. So I think a court term ends once a month. So once a month, uh, like a month is a term. So let's say you start a court process two thirds of the way through one month. Well, a week later, that term ends and the next term of court starts. So they're all they're saying here in this last paragraph is, hey, don't worry about it. Your things will be moved into the next term of court and everything is going to continue tickety-boo. But look what we're talking about here. That um, So let's just say that, okay, so money, the securities have been paid into court and the court ought to decree that the plaintiff and all right title and interest he has in the personal property or the personal estate or the trust expression, don't call it land if you don't want to, Let's say we were talking about the legal title right here. The all right title and interest, the legal version, the legal right title and interest will be divested out of him and vested in the defendant, the new trustees. And the master is will direct to make the petitioner a deed. 
that means the master is actually going to create another deed. We show up with our version of a deed. Trust me, it's going to be not bad, but it's not going to be that great either. The master is the judge. These individuals are going to be the ones that create this better version, this constructive version as a result of what we came to the court with. So again, loved ones, this was a nifty little section. And to be honest with you, I probably could have touched on this in the beginning of these uh, segments that we're doing here, these live ones, because this whole process of how to create these petitions and these deeds and how they relate to trusts is paramount. I was kind of saving it to the end, but really it could have been right at the beginning too. Point is, we're dealing with suits in relation to resulting in constructive trust. As soon as you start using these types of words, now again, I hope Bryce rolling into his court today. I hope he's only talking stuff like this. Well, your honor, as a result of my perfected interests attached to collateral, attached to a certificated security and registered form, ought to furnish the grounds to have my injunction issued, to have the accounting decreed, to have my better equitable title put into my possession, maybe wrap it up in a life estate, your honor. I don't know. All I know is that your honor, my resulting trust should grant the court the authority to construct a trust in my benefit. Thank you. Have a good day. And then sit down. That's all really he has to say. All that criminal shit is a result of us not cleaning up our messes of us, not understanding what's going on. Because trust me, loved ones, when you do all these trusts and you express all this stuff properly, you're kind of, <laughs> Jody and I were talking about this yesterday or the day before. You've ever heard that saying, no one's above the law. <laughs> what a bullshit statement. <laughs> as soon as you do this stuff, you are above the law. Absolutely. Why? Because the law is for lunatics, idiots, wards, and enemies. So as soon as you're not one of those, don't you think you've risen above? Don't you think you've ascended? No one is above the law. That's saying, so everyone following Christ consciousness, expressing trust, getting clean hands and equity are still going to be subject to speeding tickets. Wrong. No, you're not. The cop will stay away from you. As a matter of fact, when they drive by you, and again, the cop cars nowadays, they got these little computers in their car where they can read your license plate from like 100 yards away. When they pass you, they might give you the little whoop whoop with the lights just to let you know that they know who you are. Because you'd be like, what the hell? I wasn't speeding. Why is, he, why is he flashing the lights at me? Well, that was to let you know that he knows who you are. Remember, your driver's license, your license plate, all these things are going to get completely retweaked in the background as a result of the trusts that you create. Land of milk and honey versus land of sickness, pain, suffering, and death. Take your pick. And I know exactly why you're all here. Because we're tired of that version. So am I. So loved ones, I'm going to stop sharing this one. And I'm just going to throw it out here now that I'm going to suggest. Um, I'm probably going to spend, I'm going to say a couple of days, maybe even two or three intermittently here. I got to actually give the Queens a little bit of time to catch up because we're actually falling behind. We're actually not even able to get these things posted as fast as I'm belting it out. So as a result, I'm creating a bit of a backlog in one area where I'm trying to clear a path in another area. So I got to be a little bit sensitive to this. I got to balance this stuff. I got to give these ladies a break. And with Christmas and stuff coming up, a lot of family shit going on, a little shop, all this stuff, right? So what I'm going to do to make up for it, though, is I'm not going to burden them with anything else, but I'm still going to go on the Telegram chats. And I'm going to take pictures of shit. I'm going to do more videos. I'll do uh, more audio recordings. I'll be answering questions. I'm just going to kind of pick up and do what I'm doing here without the need for the Queens to be involved at all. Just to cut them a bit of a break. When are we going to come back online hardcore doing it this style? Uh, I'm going to say probably maybe just right after Christmas, maybe sometime between Christmas and the new year. That'll give me a chance to get a lot more stuff on because again, I want these meetings. I want these huddles. I want these interactions to be used for teaching purposes. And I'm not done teaching yet. We got a fair bit to go. But again, I'm just trying to be sensitive to all the parties involved here. So in consideration of all that, loved ones, I'd like to close this segment. That was, a, well, that was an hour and a half. All right. Okay. Uh, again, questions, fire them into the chats, fire them into the Telegram groups. I will be paying more attention to those now that I have a little bit more free time. Um, when I do have the deed finished, I will probably even just post it on the Telegram chat. 
maybe three days from now, maybe we'll just book one more Zoom meeting so I can introduce it and have this because I like this approach. To me, this is way more fun. But I want to keep everybody satisfied and I want to keep everybody hungry. I want to keep this momentum flowing. So this is where I would hate to just check out for a handful of days. But you know what? At the same time, I think you all need a bit of a breather as well. I know you're all drowning because, again, I know for a fact you can't assimilate and digest this stuff as fast as I can get it to you. So you're like, oh, <laughs> drowning. I know it's not fun. Okay, so here, have the life preserver. Be rested. Be well for a number of days. We'll be back. But let's tear it up on the Telegram chats. And you know what? Go on these other social media platforms and just let your knowledge rip. And don't give a shit what anybody else says. Okay? Peace. Love you all. See you soon.